Hello, this is Unit 4, Block 1st, under the title Chaucer's Poetry, a Gender Survey. And in this video, we shall discuss in brief Chaucer's literary works. Chaucer's literary career is usually divided into three periods, the French period, the Italian period, and the English period. Under the French influence, Chaucer partially translated Roman de la Rose into English under the title The Roman of the Rose. Roman de la Rose is an old French poem. The book has two writers. First 4058 lines were composed by Guillaume Lors after 1230. Then after 40 years, the poem was continued by Jane de Mew and added 17,724 additional lines. It was the most popular poem at the time of Chaucer. Now, because of its popularity, Chaucer translated it into English. He wanted to make it accessible to English readers. He translated its first 4,058 lines into English. But his translation became controversial among 19th century scholars. It is because some parts of the text were found different in style and rhyme from Chaucer's style. Now scholars agree the fragment A is attributed to Chaucer, while fragment B contains the characteristics of northern dialect, and fragment C resembles with Chaucer's style and manner but differs in the way that rhymes are constructed. It is an allegorical poem written about a dream in which the lover enters a walled garden and attempts to pluck a rose, but is being stopped by Cupid, the god of love. Then we have the book of the Dutch. It is probably Chaucer had been reading Guillaume Machau. As the influence of Machau's poetry is obvious in the Book of the Dutch, Chaucer lifted entire lines from Machau's The Judgment of the King of Bohemia. The form of elegy and much of the imagery are borrowed from him. It was written to commemorate the death of Dutch, the wife of John of Gaunt. The poem begins with the sleepless poet who is reading a book, a collection of old stories. The book is about Siax who lost his life at sea and Alcyon, his wife, is mourning in his absence. Then Alcyon dreams about his dead husband who tells Alcyon to bury him and stop mourning. Then the poem continues when poet himself dreams and finds himself in a chamber where the walls are painted with the story of the Roman de la Rose. Next we have the house of fame. The poem is in form of a dream vision. It has, uh, it was written uh, between 1374 to 1385. The poem has over 2000 lines and is divided into three books. In the first book, Chaucer finds himself inside the temple of Venus. In the second book, Chaucer is being carried by an eagle high above the earth to the house of fame. In the third book, they arrive at the feet of the house of fame and describes what he sees. But before writing the book, Chaucer had been to Italy on a diplomatic mission. It is believed that Chaucer met uh, Petrarch and Boccaccio there. This book was written under the influence of three Italian poets, Dante, Petrarch and Boccaccio. 
It is an imitation of Dante's Divine Comedy and Boccaccio's Tasaida provided the source material to the book. Next is the Parliament of Fowls. This poem is also a dream vision genre. It was probably written to commemorate the marriage of Richard II and Anne of Bohemia. In its opening section, it describes how the narrator falls asleep while reading Somnium Scipionis. After falling asleep, the narrator is taken by Africanus to a beautiful garden where he sees the Temple of Venus. It describes the conference of birds that meet to choose their mates on St. Valentine's Day. It's a type of satire on the tradition of courtly love. Next is Troilus and Cressida. It is an epic poem that narrates the tragic story of Troilus and Cressida. The poem is regarded as Chaucer's finest work. Boccaccio's uh, narrative poem Flostrato is the main source for Troilus and Cressida. Uh, it is divided into five books. Each book starts with a small prayer addressed to different gods. In the first book, Troilus discovers Cressida and falls in love with her. In the second book, after Cressida dreams, a white eagle replaces her heart with his own. She interprets that the eagle must represent Troilus and soon they start corresponding with each other. In book third, both the lovers meet first time and Troilus severs to be honest to Cressida and they celebrate their love. In book 4, Cressida is placed in a difficult position and the couple are forced to separate. In book 5, Cressida makes secret affairs with Diomedes and betrays Troilus. Troilus comes to know that he is betrayed by Cressida and is killed in a battle. Next work from Chaucer is the legend of good women. The poem is in form of a dream vision and is the third longest work of Chaucer. The poet regrets for translating Roman de la Rose. He asks for forgiveness for depicting women in a poor light in uh, Troilus and Cressida. Ovid's book Heroides and Metamorphosis are main sources for the book. The poem is divided into nine sections. It recounts the stories of ten virtuous women who either sacrificed their lives for love or suffered a lot. In the prologue, Cupid, the god of love, denounces Chaucer for writing Troilus and Cressida and for translating Roman de la Rose. To regain Cupid's favor, Alciste suggests Dreamer to create a list of wives and maidens who have been faithful all of their lives. Next is the Canterbury Tales. The book is the collection of 24 stories. It has more than 17,000 lines written in Middle English. The tales are written in verse, but uh, some are also in prose, like the Poisson's Tale uh, and Tale of Malabius. Boccaccio's The Decameron might have been the inspiration for Canterbury Tales. Uh, some lines are directly translated from Dante's uh, Divine Comedy in the Prior's Tale. Many lines have been translated from Boccaccio's Grazilda in the Calux Tale.